They call it the HP Envy 16. Now this is the premium HP creator laptop in my opinion. It has an aluminum build quality. It has a 16 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. It has upward facing speakers, a mid to large trackpad, great connectivity. Minus, this is a micro SD card slot rather than a full size SD card slot, but I'm not gonna go there. Why the HP Omen has a full size and this one has the micro and this one's made for creators doesn't make sense to me. And I wanna do a full review of the HP Omen versus the HP Envy. So make sure you keep an eye out on the channel for that video. But overall, that is the classification that I'm putting on this laptop, premium creator laptop. It has an i7-12700H, it has an RTX 3060. So it has the punch that you need for video editing, for graphic design, photography, digital art, some 3D modeling, some motion design. We're gonna get into all the benchmarks in a few minutes, but let's cover some of the essential details that I'm not able to cover in my unboxings. First and foremost, here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks like. This is the webcam on the HP NV16 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And speaking of those upward facing speakers, here's a quick audio sample of what the speakers sound like as well. Now, I love the keyboard on the HP Envy. It has a medium key press. It does not have a numpad, which personally I am a fan of, but it does have a few extra keys here, like page up, page down, home key. It gives you a little extra functionality on your keyboard deck. Now, keep in mind that this does not come installed with the HP Omen Command Center, so you don't have really any fan control on this system. Now, I can't even press like, function F to edit the fans or anything. So that would probably be one of the downsides of this system to me personally. However, the upside of that is it does do a pretty good job regulating the performance for you and specifically the fan noise and the thermals are, are excellent on this computer. So let's take a look at that real quick while we're talking about it. While doing 4K video editing of a nine minute 4K clip exported out at full quality YouTube settings, the fans reached a max of 45 decibels and the maximum degree Celsius was 71 degrees Celsius. And I was also to get on battery power only 58 degrees Celsius. So you can see there that this laptop does run cool and fairly quiet. So it kind of leans into that creator vibes, uh, especially if you're maybe in music production or you're just somebody who doesn't like a loud computer, the HP Envy is a great fit for you. And we'll get into the comparison benchmarks of how this thing performs compared to other, you know, quote unquote, full on gaming laptops tops in just a few minutes. Now the screen, as I mentioned a moment ago, is a great display. It's a 2.5K display, has a screen brightness of 325 nits. It's 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 2.15. So it does have a good quality color accurate screen attached to this laptop, which again lends to the photographer, graphic designer, and video editor looking to do the correct color corrections on their projects. I'm freaking stoked about the Patreon that we're about to launch, absolutely. We're launching a freaking Patreon and you should join because it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have never before seen content on the channel. Patreon, not channel, channel's YouTube. So why is this content not being posted to YouTube? Well, the answer is really simple. I know that there is a tight group of loyal followers that follow my content and I wanna reward and be a part of the tight, loyal community that we have been building here as we've been reaching 85,000 subscribers. And I wanna go deeper with you guys. I wanna do live Q and A's. I wanna get face to face with you and chat in a live video call with my most faithful subscribers. I wanna repurpose that content and put it on my channel so you can then be featured in my channel with me. I want to do exclusive giveaways that I can't just launch to the masses of communities. There's sometimes I get to keep laptops, but I don't need them. And so it's a place for me to basically just give back to my most loyal community followers. Now, as far as the on-the-go friendliness of this laptop, you don't have a lot of control over the fan modes. And that leads to good battery life, not great battery life. Because if I wanna go in say, you know, like super quiet mode or battery saver mode, all I have is that little Windows battery saver mode here on the 
like a Windows taskbar. I don't have anything inside of a command center from HP to help me with that. So for productivity battery life, we get around seven hours and 23 minutes. For streaming video playback, about five hours and 11 minutes. For Photoshop, it was decent at three hours and 42 minutes. And then for video editing, two hours and 21 minutes. Now for Photoshop, I'm running the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. For video editing, I'm running a 4K project inside of Premiere Pro and playing it back on loop until the battery goes dead. So I would hope for more battery life, but classic Intel at the moment, battery life is not their forte. If you're looking for battery life, Ryzen is gonna be the go-to at the moment in my personal opinion. It could change next year, but right now that's where we're sitting. Continuing on in the on-the-go friendliness, the weight and thickness is coming up on the screen. It is a pretty thin laptop, not super thin, and isn't too heavy either. This isn't like the ultimate thin and light laptop, but for the performance, and build quality that you get from this laptop, it's fairly thin and light. Definitely a little bit thinner than the old HP Omen. Now, I touched briefly on the ports earlier, complained about them for a moment, but let's fully cover them. You have a USB type A on the left side panel, a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot, as well as a nice size vent. And on the right side panel, we have a USB type A, your power adapter, HDMI, and two USB type Cs. Again, I really wish we would have had a full size SD card slot since this is made for, you know, creators, HP kind of promotes it on their website. It's kind of confusing why they would give you a micro SD card slot since most cameras and devices take full size SD cards besides maybe like drones and you can, you know, get a micro SD card adapter, but that's just more gear you have to carry around. So that'd be my one main complaint with this computer as far as the build and usability is concerned. Now, I forgot to give you a sample of the keyboard and trackpad kind of all over the place in this video, but that's what keeps it spicy. So here's a quick audio sample of the trackpad and keyboard so you can check it out. Without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks of the HP Envy 16. Now, first and foremost, kicking it off in the simulated benchmarks, this laptop performs well. It wouldn't perform amazing. And again, that is the fan modes. I really wish they came pre-installed a nice controller for the different fan modes because that would allow us to boost up the computer to maybe go over that, you know, 45 decibels of fan noise to get a little bit more power through our system or, you know, drop it down. Maybe if we're wanting to run on like a silent mode or a quiet mode. And so that's going to throw off some of the performance that you see here from the i7-12700H and RTX 3060. Inside of something like the HP Omen, these components would perform a little bit better. Check out the full review for the full comparison. Uh, but for this one, you can see in the HP NV16 in Geekbench single core and multi-core, we have kind of low to mid range on the charts against some other popular gaming laptops. Same thing moving to Cinebench R20, we kind of drop down the chart there. And then for Cinebench R23, again, holding mid range of the chart for single core and multi-core as well. And so I must admit, I was a little disappointed in the power that was produced from the components, but I think the goal for here is more of a cool and quiet crater laptop than it is a you know powerful, hot, loud workhorse of a laptop. So if you're gonna be like a 4K video editor, uh, photographer, digital artist or graphic designer, this is gonna be absolutely plenty of power for you. It's gonna be more than enough than you need. But if you're looking towards like 6K, ton of motion design and like 3D modeling, this is a model I would kind of maybe steer you away from. And let me show you right now what I'm talking about. As we get into the Blender Classroom benchmark, you can see down at the bottom of this chart, it scores a 573. My de facto score is gonna be a high 600 uh, to mid 700 if I'm gonna be like, yeah, let's go Blender, you can perform really well. And this one scores a 573. So just not the best score. As we move into 3D modeling, you can see it hits the lower end of the chart. Now, these scores are actually good. If you can see on the chart there, there's an HP Victus with the Ryzen 5 5600H and RTX 3050 Ti, and that scores in kind of the 130s. So you don't want to get a RTX 3050 Ti for 3D modeling. But also if you get an RTX 3060 like we have here, you want it to perform on par with other RTX 3060s. For instance, the HP Omen on this chart for the Autodesk 3ds Max is scoring a 192. 
compared to the 154 of the HP Envy 16. So it does lack in how much power it's able to push because of the way that HP has kind of optimized the components in this laptop. Okay, I won't hang on there too long. Let's move on to Autodesk Maya, and you can kind of see the same thing here. A 200 is a great score, but compared to the HP Omen with the 244, it's at least 15% better um, and it's the same components. So you're just kind of sacrificing, it's kind of like a trade off here. You're getting a little more premium laptop with better noise and thermal uh, control than you're getting like a high end workhorse gaming laptop. So you really are just having to choose what you want here. Now moving on to PTC Creo and SolidWorks, we're seeing the same story as well. Um, so I won't belabor the point, just kind of the same thing that we're seeing before. Now moving on to Photoshop, we get a solid Photoshop score of 827. Anything above 700, I'm very happy with. So again, like I mentioned earlier, graphic designer, photographer, digital artist, you're gonna be in good hands with the HP Envy. Moving on to After Effects, this is one area that I wanna see a laptop in the 700s where I'm like, yes, that laptop's gonna kill it in After Effects. And it's just slightly below the 700s. So could you use this laptop for After Effects? Absolutely. You're not gonna have any issues. It's just not gonna be as smooth as a laptop in the mid 700 to 800s um, is where I feel most comfortable. Like, yeah, rock on for After Effects. Um, this will be good for After Effects, but just won't be as smooth as, as something that's a little bit more pep in its step. Again, the HP Omen up there with an 865, almost 200 points more than the HP Envy with the same components. Again, it's all about optimization and components right now because you would look at this uh, and you would think, okay, i7-12700H and RTX 3060, HP Omen versus HP Envy should be totally the same. But as you see here, optimization is really key uh, with this laptop. All right, moving on to playback in Premiere Pro. This is another area where I would say this is definitely a 4K video editing laptop. However, I would not recommend this for 6K. As you can see on the 4K, 6K B-RAW, 6K red footage chart for playback, for this laptop, it's dropping about 6,000 frames in B-RAW, and to me, for an RTX 3060, that just isn't normal. It should be in the high hundreds to thousands at the max. And so that's why I'm saying this laptop isn't as optimized for some of that more heavy workhorse uh, type of work. 6K red footage, even higher, 9,300 drop frames. Um, and so again, I'm gonna keep this at a 4K video editing laptop, light motion graphics, graphic design, um, photography, digital art, and some light 3D modeling. I think 6K stuff's just a little too heavy for this laptop. All right, moving on to the 4K export times out of Premiere Pro, you can see the different laptops coming up on the screen. This actually gets one of the slower export times uh, compared to some other laptops recently. Um, I'm not gonna belabor the points that I made earlier, but just again, component optimization. Moving on to the 6K export times, once again, one of the higher export times at 23 minutes and 48 seconds. DaVinci Resolve, same story, different application, eight minutes and 12 seconds. I like to see a laptop around the six minute to four minute export time, if I'm gonna say it's like a really powerful workhorse of a laptop. Okay, now that it's looked like I've literally made this laptop into a punching bag, that's not my point. I'm trying to classify where this laptop fits. This is a premium laptop that's fantastic for digital artists, graphic designers, photographers, and 4K video editors. I would say if you're a motion designer or 3D modeler, this laptop could do well. There are more powerful laptops, but then you sacrifice some of the neat build quality and screen quality aspects that you get with this laptop. So in this circumstance, you're kind of choosing a powerful laptop with great build quality versus a very powerful workhorse laptop, something like the HP Omen, the Legion 5i Pro, um, the Legion 7 Slim, the Asus Zephyrus G14, the Asus Zephyrus M16, okay? Like those are like workhorse laptops that don't have all the frills of like a crater laptop, like super color accurate screen, all aluminum build quality, very clean minimalist aesthetic, right? So those are kind of the trade-offs you have to be thinking of with this laptop. It's still a powerful laptop. It's as powerful as a lot of laptops from last year. Just these new gaming laptops with 12th gen and Ryzen 6000 series have just stepped it up. And this laptop focused more on cool, quiet thermals, quality 16 inch screen, and a great build aesthetic. I don't wanna belabor the point, 
but I hope that's been clear. If it hasn't, please comment below and I'd love to maybe clarify some details and questions that you have. Subscribe for 100,000 subscribers by Christmas. Let's make some dreams come true here. Links if you're ready to make a purchase in the description below. Likes if this video has brought you some value and I will see you guys here in the next video.